The tragedy occurred around 8 a.m. Witnesses say there was a distinctive sound of a falling machine, followed by a bang. At the time, Said Pauling and father, Roman Laba, was staying at a rectory just 200 meters from the crash site. When we approached the scene of the event, the police also asked us for help because one girl in a panic had died somewhere, meaning she started running away and they could not find her. Ukraine's emergency situation service reported that more than a dozen people died in the helicopter crash, including the head of Ukraine's interior ministry, Denis Monastirsky. The helicopter hit right next to a kindergarten building. Four children are dead and 11 are injured. The Prosecutor General's Office of Ukraine has taken over supervision of the investigation. Uh, young guy, very patriotic guy, do it a lot of things for Ukraine and uh, make it police reform uh, in uh, in Ukraine. And uh, it's actually it's, uh, a big tragedy for Ukraine, for his family, uh, and also children. I am deeply shocked by the news of the tragic death of Minister Denis Monastirsky and two other members of the leadership of Ukraine's interior ministry. To the family of the deceased and to the entire Ukrainian society, I extend my deepest sympathies. Farewell, friends. The rescue operation in Dnipro after the Russian missile attack ended yesterday. 79 people were wounded, 45 Ukrainians were killed, including six children and an 11-month-old boy. This footage shows a block of flats in Dnipro just after the missile hit. It shows a woman, most likely in shock, standing on the edge of her destroyed apartment. I'm sure that now, after Davos, there will be more active people to form a tribunal. Since February 24th, Russia is said to have lost more than 117,000 troops, more than 3,100 tanks, 6,200 armored vehicles, or nearly 300 aircraft in Ukraine. Over the past 24 hours, the Russians have shelled the Nikopol region, Mykolaiv region and Kherson region, among others, with four people wounded. The British Defense Ministry conveyed that the seizure of Solodar by the Russians and Wagner Group mercenaries will increase the risk of cutting the Ukrainian supply route to the defending Bakhmut. The Russian assault on Solodar was a support operation aimed at encircling the larger village Bakhmut. One of Bakhmut's two main supply routes is now under increasing pressure. Meanwhile, U.S. and Ukrainian army commanders, Generals Mark Milley and Valery Zawuzny, met in Poland. This is the first such meeting between the U.S. and Ukraine. According to Professor Piotr Grochmalski, Russia is preparing for another significant confrontation with Ukraine. Most Western reports, but also Ukrainian reports, make it clear that Russia has prepared for a second, major massive strike. Deputy Speaker of the same, Małgorzata Gosiewska, has donated a generator set to the Ukrainian Children's Hospital in Brzuchowice. It is the largest hospital in Ukraine with 3,200 beds. We have been cooperating since the beginning of this fierce war. We brought medicine, equipment. Now we are giving concrete help. I thank the Polish government, the people, the Poles, everyone very much, because Poland was the country that first reached out to help us. And thanks to this, we are working in the regime we are working in today. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Ruda is on a visit to the United States. He declared that the Netherlands will also provide Ukraine with a Patriot missile system.